I have not seen I, it like this I since I went five bid for a half a million shares of Citigroup when I got hit in 1990. This is a different kind of market, and the Fed is asleep. It was not a. It, it would be one of those things where um, it was humiliating, and, and I was uh, soundly and roundly criticized. And it's the type of thing that makes you think: Well, is it worth it to to try to expose things uh, or tell the truth to stand truth to power? Uh, I guess I don't play for dinner. I'm fortunate enough to have done well in my life that I wasn't fearful. So what you saw was a not fearful, passionate guy who was uh, widely held to being, uh, let's say, office meds. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a shame. It's a shame. But it's what happens sometimes. And I look back and I'm proud of what I did. I have talked to the heads of almost every single one of these firms in the last 72 hours, and he has no idea what it's like out there. None! And Bill Poole has no idea what it's like out there. My people have been in this game for 25 years, and they are losing their jobs, and these firms are going to go out of business, and he's nuts! They're nuts! I was a hedge fund manager, and before that I worked at Goldman Sachs, and if you look at my age, you'll recognize that the people I started working with, and we're, fr we're friends at pretty much every single firm, uh, had all risen in the ranks to the point where they were uh, running firms or running trading desks. And there was a fixed income crisis going around where it was very clear that the mortgage market was absolutely falling apart and firms were going to fail and they needed the discount rate. Uh, they needed the discount window open. They needed interest rates to be cut rather dramatically. They had just risen 17 straight times. Uh, this was the fulcrum of this decline was the uh, housing, people walking away for their housing, uh, not putting any money down, a lot of bad loans. So the mortgage bundles were uh, falling apart. But the Fed seemed very unaware of that. And I was dealing with people all over the country who were telling me, maybe if you spoke. And the last guy I talked to was a major, ma ran a major, major subprime. And it got me really firing on all cylinders. I came in hot. At one point, Aaron, my good friend Aaron Burnett said, Jim, if they lowered rates, it would be Armageddon. That triggered a second round of ramp. But the first one was mostly about how uh, they don't, they were out of touch. And I, uh, I have a real money piece about uh, what went through my mind, uh, uh, the, how out of touch they were versus how in touch I was. Uh, subsequently, the transcript of the meeting that occurred three days after my rant, made, they made fun of me. Uh, they basically said, listen, the real problems are the economy's getting stronger, not weaker. And Jim is really, Kramer's wrong. Uh, I was a laugh line. And it, that's a shame because they still could have done something to save things. They had to cut rates dramatically and they had to realize what was happening, that there was Armageddon uh, and it was different. It was a different kind of market. And they didn't understand it. Uh, and because they didn't understand it, because they were complacent, particularly Mr. Poole, very nice man from St. Louis, had good data, but just either misread the data or didn't understand. They were out of touch with the real world. They were in a different world. Their world that uh, was not, it was a glass full, and my world was glass empty. Are there any warning signs you see in the current environment? The only one I see, but I really don't like it, is uh, in subprime auto. Uh, I was watching an ad for AutoNation where they're talking, they have people singing Vacation, the Go Go song, but they're calling it Paycation, and they're talking uh, you're shooting chair dancing in a car about how they don't have to pay anything for the next couple of months. They can just go get a car. That's the kind of thing that we saw on ads before. Uh, I don't mean to pick on ordination. I think it's kind of a national phenomenon. But the reason why, and thank you, Matt Horwey, for pointing this out to me. He's my writing partner. Uh, that one of the things that you see is, is that cars are no longer uh, the same as they are each year, uh, but just different model look. The cars, the old cars, are no longer technologically good. Uh, we've come to accept that there are certain technologies, and so you have cars that no longer hold their value. And that's interesting because houses didn't hold their value. Now, housing market was a $14 trillion market. There was a gigantic number of loans that were made at a very high price point. Remember, you know, a housing loan is obviously more than a car. But it's something worth watching because it's where the Fed should be saying, listen, Wells Fargo is up to 720 on the FICO. We want that to be the standard. And they could say that. I mean, Janet Yellen could just come out and say, I'm not comfortable with all the subprime loans that are being done and just kind of jawbone them higher. Say, look, you know, Wells made a lot of mistakes. They're not that uh, they have been terrible when, when it came to what they said did to the different accounts, but they're right about auto loans. And what I really wish had happened back then was is that instead of tightening and tightening and tightening uh, on, uh, for mortgage loans, Bernanke would have stopped, you know, that's the Fed funds rate, uh, 17 times was way too much, and he should have cut rates here, and he should have said something.
He should have said, I don't like what's happening, banks. You can't keep lending at 120% LTV, loan to value. What people were doing was that they were buying homes and they were uh, taking out a a uh, HELOC, they're taking out a home equity loan in order to pay off the down payment or there were no down payment, no no, uh, no doc. I see things happening like that in autos and it very, it very does, it concerns me. 